What if I told you that in my opinion, the true end game of Path of Exile isn't farming bosses. It's not farming divines. It's not deleting your apothecary or your house of mirrors. What if I told you the true end game of Path of Exile was an ever expanding, ever evolving dungeon or a bunch of monsters and bosses that you can farm infinitely that only grew harder and stronger. And what if I said that your build that you're playing right now could you only get to a certain depth before you had to adapt, change, and overcome. Now you might be saying, well, I can farm all the uber bosses that I want, and I can kill Maven a hundred million times until my items bleed. But what can I not do? Well, that, my friends, is Deep Dell. Now, over the last couple of days, maybe about two weeks or so, I have been exploring the possibilities of Delve, and with perfect timing on the screen, you can see that Misha is pushing even deeper. Now, every league for a couple leagues now, I've noticed different characters are pushing deeper in Delve, and I always say to myself, why? What's the point? Delve doesn't seem exciting. I get down a couple hundred levels. I'm okay. The loot feels medium. The bosses are scarce. What's the point? But this league, this league, I learned something interesting, something wild and crazy that blew my mind. Now, in the last video, we talked about Delve. We talked about the basics of Delve, kind of a little bit ins and outs, and we're going to touch on things and we're going to expand on them today. Now, Delve is an interest, interesting thing. Nico, the master of sniffing sulfite and azurite, will bring us to our mine. If we control click Nico, we can go to our mine and so forth and so on. But before that, we're just going to travel on over to the mine encampment and talk a little bit about it. Nico, the master of depths, will bring us to our subterranean chart. In that chart, for newer players, odds are your first time in Delve, your, your mind will look like this. You'll have node one. You'll notice that node one is at depth one, monster level 34. You'll have a straight shot down the mines and you'll be able to just do just like I am right now until about depth 100. At depth 100, you'll notice the monster level is 80 and you'll have to make a decision on how you wanna start diving deep into the mines. To dive into the mines, we need something called sulfite Sulfite we get out of maps, and sulfite's the gas that we use for the minecart, and we use that minecart to traverse the nodes and move further and further and further down. As we go down the mines and down the mines, things start to change and get a little bit more difficult and very interesting. Now, what I mean by delve is the true end game. As you can see, if I'm looking at depth 119, where my mouse is, it's known as the magma fissure. This biome is known as the Abyssal Depths. This one is known as the Frozen Hollows. And this is the Petrified Forest. Now, while looking at these names, you might have noticed that monster mods are starting to spawn. The Abyssal Depths is Burning Ground, Curse Effect, Quantity, Rarity, Pack Size, the Magma Fisher has nothing. And those mods scale. And they scale fast. What was nothing is now 39% extra damage from crits. Projectiles always pierce, 60% impale. Monsters have onslaught, monsters poison, desecrated ground, frenzy charge and hit, all damage always ignites, 50% chance to avoid poison, impale, bleeds. And these mods just keep scaling and scaling and scaling, getting harder and harder and harder. Now, I know some of you are about to click off and you're going to say, well, what's the point of ever growing difficulty? Where are the divines? Can I make money? And yeah, the money's insane. The money's really good. Can I give you divines per hour? Have I tracked everything? I've tracked things, but I'll explain the divines per hour and how it's calculated and figured out. And I'll let you be the judge of if you want to push deep or not. But before we go into the money and the profits, let's talk about the mines. Now, I've mentioned that when you start, your depth and delve will look like this. And you can see that I'm jumping all around my mine in different levels and different depths very quickly and very easily. Down here in the search bar, if I type depth, and then colon, I can put my different depths. So when you start, you'll be at roughly depth 100 and you'll start moving down. Now, when you go into the mines, you're gonna notice a couple of things. I'll go into a, into a node and show you. You'll notice the start delve button here. You'll have your little mine cart, or if you're like me and you bought the supporter pack, you'll have a bear. You'll notice that it is dark, it is gloomy, it is grim, and your bear will follow you as you make your way to the nodes. Now, a lot of players will talk about Delve. A lot of players will tell you that 
The darkness is your friend. Upgrade your darkness resistance. Look for things in the dark. There's all kinds of cool stuff hidden in the dark. But I'm going to tell you something completely different. And I'm going to tell you to just ignore it. Don't even worry about it. It's not worth your time. Now, in the last video, I got a lot of comments from people who are giving me tips and tricks on delves. And a lot of people who are very upset that I didn't talk more about the Voltaxic Generator and the darkness and the darkness radius and the resistances and the flares and this and that. And we're going to spend a couple of minutes. As you start going down deeper into the mines, you'll notice that it is darker, it is gloomier, it is grim. It is everything that Path of Exile presents to us in this crazy underground world that we never knew existed. Now, after extensive research and talking to a lot of Delvers, I have found out that darkness resistance pretty much does nothing. Light radius pretty much does nothing. Running around in the dark used to be a thing that is no longer a thing. You can still run around in the dark in earlier depths, but if you're going to push into the later depths, you really don't need it. The amount of sulfite it would take to upgrade my darkness resistance and light resistance or light radius would be hundreds of divines. Now, I know what you're saying, but it's only Azerite. How does Azerite convert into divines? And we'll touch on that in a second. What I will tell you is things that are worth upgrading are your flares, your dynamite, your maximum amount of flares, your maximum amount of dynamite, your dynamite damage and your flare radius. You can get flare duration too, but as soon as it starts to get like pricey, maybe scale back a little bit on it. You can see it's at 1900 for 23 seconds. Then it kind of like caps out. So, you know, choose to do it as you will. I purposely didn't cap mine out because I was going to show you in the video how it upgrades and scales. Same thing with the darkness radius or the flare radius. You probably want positive radius, especially when you're exploring cities. Cities will be a lot of your income. So you go into Delve and you say, well, I want to get to the hard stuff. I want to get the good stuff. What do I need to do and how do I do it? And what can my build accomplish? What can 10 divines do? What can 20 divines do? And I'm going to tell you it like this. Take your character, put it in Delve and see how deep you can get. Now, I've got a lot of comments that said, well, depth Delve takes forever. It's too slow. It's this, it's that. Is it worth it? Why would I do it? Do you know how long it takes to go down? And I do, I do. I got down to 1600. It does, it takes a minute. But my advice to you, Dev and Delve scales. What do I mean? The more rewards you get are equal to the distance that you go down. I'm oh, sorry, it's my ring doorbell. So the deeper you get, the more money you make. The more money you make, the harder it gets. It's pretty simple. You'll notice in my mind, right here i don't go across i don't go side to side i follow a straight path down and i've been doing this pretty much straight down non-stop here was a was a boss i sidetracked i went to the boss and then you'll notice i went here i saw it was a dead end i backtracked and i just focused on going completely down so to test how long it took me to go down you'll notice i now have two mine shafts i raced a good buddy of mine from depth 200 to 400 to see how long it would take i did this live on twitch it took about two and a half hours to go for 200 depth 200 to 400. you'll notice in my mind once again they both just go straight down i got a little excited a little sidetracked here as i saw fractured fossils and and faceted fossils and i went to go get them they took a little bit of time but you could see it's pretty much both of my minds just do a straight shot all the way down. Now I stopped at 358 because Pia had already won the race. And you can see that my mind just continues and I just start going straight down again. And I do this and I don't deviate off the main path unless it's something very, very, very special. Now I'm gonna give you guys the same advice that I'm talking about right now. If you're starting to delve and you're starting to get into delve and you wanna to start to make money and explore the difficulty that is delve, go straight down. Don't go side to side, don't venture off the main path. If you are looking for a challenge, bring your character as far down as you can go and hit a wall. For me, I have not hit that wall yet. I'm at 17, about to be 1700 delve. Majority of the people watching this video can probably get to about 600, 700, 800, except for the few outliers who are watching this. They could probably push a lot further. Now, if you hit, say, 700 delve and it's too hard, but you still want to delve, you got the itch, go back to 500 and start going side to side. Now, you notice in the mine shaft that I had above at depth 200, you can see that delve is an infinite 
mine shaft well not infinite going down there is a limit to go down but there's infinite side to side so you'll never run out of nodes you'll never run out of bosses you'll never run out of things to farm and it's infinitely generating forever so if you hit a wall jump back so where's the money how do i make money in delve what is the plan what do i do how do i do it now there's a couple ways to make money in delve the first way we mentioned earlier which was sulfite sulfite transfers into the lines we use our sulfite or our azurite forgive me we use our azurite at nico we buy one socket resonators 100 of these turns into divine at depth 1600 i get 37 to 36 to 38 37 is the average 3700 azurite per azurite three node so every 10 nodes i make a divine nodes take 45 seconds i'll let you do the math so 10 nodes, 45 seconds. That's how long it takes me to make a divine at depth 1600 and change. Now, Azerite three nodes. What I mean by that is I mean it is an Azerite node right here that shows the Roman numeral three. These are about 3700. These are about 1500. And Azerite two, which I have right here, is about 2500. So if I get a good patch of, you know, a good patch of Azerite, I would go here, 15, 36, 36, 25, 25, and that adds up relatively quick. So 45 seconds, 10 nodes, depending on the distance of the nodes, so forth and so on. The other places that you'll get money, you'll get money from the bosses. The Licious team, unfortunately, is not very good money. Most people skip him, skip, skip, skip him. But there is another boss called, um, not the Otembo guy. That's all. There's another guy, the Grand Architect. He comes out of the cities. He comes out of the ruined or the Val outpost cities. He would be in here. I don't have one on my screen to show you. But he drops the Doriani map. That's four divines. He drops the ultimatum piece. That's ADC. That's really, really good money. He's relatively simple. Ooh, there could be an all here. That's a primeval chamber. I didn't even notice that the last time. I bet you there's an all in here. We'll check at the end of the video if there's an all i'll put the i'll put the all for you guys to see inside of the blue chambers you can find alls alls are really good he drops the all necklace at the beginning of the league the all necklace is worth a fortune undivine now id you can get between two and ten divines so the bosses are really good profit i recommend killing the bosses you start seeing more bosses the deeper you go down in Delve. I have some screenshots of different levels of Delve just to show you guys in a minute. Outside of that, we have our fossil nodes. The petrified forest is not very good. The abyssal depths is pretty good. Every one of these abyssal depth nodes will give you a fossil. That fossil in bulk, seven, seven of them sell for a divine. So right here, I have two. There's three, there's four. It's pretty good. And then we have frozen hollows every five of these sulfur divine so there's two right there petrified forest not very good we have a smuggler stash mm, we'd probably skip that we have a human fisher over here this one's really good every three of these is a divine if these are faceted i think no these are fractured fossils so every two of these two are divine we have a smuggler stash over there it's not very good we have more frozen hollows so like i said every five of these is a divine we have another one over there. We have another one over there. That's a fungal cavern, so that's not worth it. And you'll notice, like, as I just kind of, like, scroll down, you'll see I'm getting... There's there's another one. That one's worth money. Abyssal Depths. Abyssal Depths. Smuggler Stash. That one's not. Petrified Abyssal Depth. There. Human Fisher. Smuggler Stash. Not good. That one's good. And you'll just see these... As I scroll up, these nodes become a little bit less and a little bit less and a little bit less. So the deeper you go, the more of the bigger fossils that you're going to see that are worth money. So this one's over here. So I'd have to like figure out how to get to over here. So I'd probably have to go here, 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 here. Not too bad. So the deeper you go, the more bosses you'll see, the more cities you'll see, the more special fossils you'll see. Those all incorporate money. And the deeper down you go, and please, if even been told otherwise, correct me, the more Azerite you'll see. So we get our money from our Azerite, we get our money from our bosses, we get our money from our specialized fossils, and then there's a really good opportunity to get money in the cities. There's three cities. There's the Abyssal Chambers, the Prime Evil Chambers, and the Val Outpost. The Val Outpost are the red ones, the Abyssal ones are the green ones, and the blue ones are the Prime Evil. 
the blue ones have a chance to contain Azure chest this deep down each Azure chest is like a divine and change all of the cities have a ton of awakened sextants you can sell awakened sextants for profits and overall they just have a bunch of really cool stuff you can get maps you can get pretty much everything so as i go down deeper and deeper the more cities i'll see now i have some screenshots that i want to show you guys and it'll hopefully help explain things a little bit more so this is depth 2000 this is slightly deeper than what i'm at right now you'll see there's a boss there there's a city there there's a city there there's a boss there there's a boss there and from what I've been told, 2000 is the magical breakpoint that every time you start to hit a city, 90% of the time you'll have a boss. So if we look, there's a boss there at 2000, a boss there, a boss there. So on this screen alone, there's multiple bosses. As we get down to 3000, you'll see city, 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 special fossil, special fossil, special fossil. And I'll post these screenshots in the description for you guys to take a look at yourself. But as we start to go down deeper and deeper and deeper, the profit just starts to go up because we have boss, fossil, fossil, azurite, azurite, special fossil or special node. And it just scales with how deep we go. Now, I know I opened with and said this is the true end game of Path of Exile because we can go 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. And it just gets harder and harder and harder and harder. But the money keeps going up and up and up. Now, odds are if you're playing Special Shield Throw or you're playing a really cool build, I know Special Shield Throw from experience can get down to 900 depth pretty easily and you could start exploring Delve and having a good time. And a lot of builds can get to 500 and 600 before they start really hitting a wall. Now, if you're looking for builds to play or different things, in the description of this video, I'm going to put a bunch of builds that I've been looking at and doing research on. I found a really cool build for Rudy that he's using vortex and creeping frost this build got to about 600 i found a bone shatter build that this guy got to a thousand with i found another bone shatter build this one is sanctum league this guy got down multiple thousands i found an armor stacking build this guy got like way deep <laughs> like holy cannolis this guy got deep and i'll happily share the research and the builds and things that i find out with you guys now, if you want to find your own build or do your own research, just like you would find any other build, you can go on over to PoE Ninja. Now, keep in mind, any Crucible builds that you find might not be relevant or work next league, but if you still want to mess around and delve right now, this is a really good opportunity to do this. So we can go to the PoE Ninja. We have our latest snapshot, and we can just hit the depth button and start taking a look at all the different players in delve and how deep they've been going and what they've been doing. And you can look at the Bowering Totem, Shield Crush, Molten Strike, Shock Nova. And you can pretty much just take a look at what a bunch of different people are doing and check out all the different builds. Now, if you wanted a league start delve or you don't have a lot of currency or you're looking for something a little bit easier, you can change the snapshot to day three, day four, day five. And just once again, do the same thing. Start taking a look at early, early builds and delve and what people were doing. There's Fire Trap RF, there's Val Detonate Dead, there's Hex Blast, Exsanguinate, Bone Shatter, Vortex. And these will give you a really good idea of what kind of gear you can expect going down into the earlier stages of the delve, especially on an early league start. Now, all amulets on league start are about 20 divines unidentified. Don't quote me on that, but they are really, really, really expensive. So if you can get down to like depth three, four, five, six, seven hundred in the first week, and you can kill all, you'll probably make a lot of divines real fast, like real fast. I encourage you guys to explore POE Ninja and look at the different Delve builds. And just like we looked at the Rudy build, if you took a look at his gear, it's pretty basic. It's just cold dot damage over time, weapon pen. It's a rim gaze with socketed duration gems, which you probably don't even need. It's a basic ES chest with resistances in life. It's a basic shield and all the gear is pretty basic. The same thing if we look at the Bone Shatter guy. The Bone Shatter guy has just got an armor based shield with, you know, onslaught one hit, physical damage reduction, you know, a helmet that has essence reserve mana on it and nothing like pretty much nothing else. A standard axe like with crafted fizz damage on it. These these builds that are getting down early in Delve are very basic. Granted, like when you start looking at the three, four, five, six thousand builds, especially with what I'm playing, like 
they get pricey, but you can afford them by delving. And that's the beauty of it. The money is there and the challenge is there. Now, once again, I'll put all these links to all these POBs. I'll put all these screenshots in the description and you guys can mess around and check them out yourselves. But I'll say this, if you're looking for a challenge or you're looking for something different and you just kind of want to like push the limits to your character, I encourage you like heavily, heavily, heavily encourage you to just explore Delve, to explore, <laughs> explore Delve and check it out. I know for me, I'm going to be looking into these League Starter builds. I'm going to be doing some research and information on them. I'm going to be testing out a bunch of different ones on stream. I encourage you to come over to the Twitch stream if you want to watch some of those. And overall, between Path of Exile and Diablo 4, I've got a lot of content planned for the future. I still plan on exploring ExileCon when it comes out. I still have a ton of goals to do in Crucible League and a bunch of different things that I want to see. But you're going to be getting a mix of Delve for the next couple of videos, more than likely. And you're going to be getting a mix of probably a little bit of Diablo. But Delve is insane. <laughs> I, I just I just want to keep repeating myself over and over and over and I know I should and you can see right now just my character can just at 1600 depth just stand there and not die <laughs> like that's that's like to me that's so cool and so mind-blowing like my other characters couldn't normally do this like my non-delvers like sure you can make a tanky character that looking like like tank ubers and stuff yeah but but I don't know, man. This is just, it's a whole new world and a whole new ball game. I encourage you to try it. I encourage you to go down to the, the mines, explore. If you get stuck, if you have questions, if you don't know what to do or what to look for, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer everybody. There'll be a lot of information in the description of the video and try it because I've been making really good money and you might too. I'm going to touch on the money one more time. The money comes from the specialized nodes, the fossil nodes. The money is going to come from the Azerite. The money is going to come from the bosses and the money is going to come from the city. How to tell you what the vines per hour is, is literally dependent on how fast your build goes and how fast you can clear the nodes and go node to node and loot, process everything and go down and do things. So if you're a slower player, you'll make less divines per hour. If you're a faster player who's more efficient, you'll make more divines per hour. You know, it's really gonna come down to you in the end of it and how well you play and how fast you do things. So I encourage you to give it a shot. If you hit a wall and you don't know what to do, delve and delve and everything is just too hard, it is okay to backtrack. 500, 600 is a really, really sweet spot for a lot of builds, make a lot of money. The lower you go, the more money you'll make, but most builds can get to about 500 and start making pretty good profit and see bosses pretty often. So I encourage you, if you're not, even if you're not going to deep, deep delve and you're not gonna push for 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, I encourage you to get the 500 or 600 and just go side to side. Give it a real shot and go check it out. Now, I mentioned this and I'll say it again. You don't need darkness resistance. You don't need light radius. You do need flares, you do need dynamite, and you do want to max out the radius eventually, and you want to max out the damage of the dynamite, and just kind of get used to running around in the dark. You'll thank me later, I promise. Don't worry too much about the side walls. Don't worry about running around in the darkness. Just go node to node. Just clear the nodes as fast as you can. Collect all the Azerite, kill all the bosses, get all the all amulets, and let me know how it goes. For now, though, I'm going to get this video edited out to you guys. I'm going to go prep for D4 this weekend. And then we're going to go hop back into the mines. So for now, friends, so long for all of Vitae. And if I see you in Diablo or if I see you on Path of Exile, I look forward to chatting with you. If you have questions and you see me on D4, don't hesitate to ask. I'll gladly talk PoE on D4 and vice versa. So friends, so long for all of Vitae. Until the next one.